Jeff Strong, and I play bassoon in the Allen Philharmonic. The purpose of this video is to discuss bassoon reeds. Now, the reed is the maybe the most important part of the whole bassoon system playing, because you can have a very good instrument, and if you have a reed on there that's not very good, then that instrument will not sound good. So where do you get good reeds? Ideally, you buy them from someone who hand makes them, an uh, advanced bassoon player. Your private teacher is usually a good source. There are other vendors in the area and all over the country that sell handmade bassoon reeds as well. If you don't have that luxury, then you may be looking at uh, buying other reeds and you might want some pointers on what to look for in a good reed. So I have what I consider my best reed right here, and I'll point out some qualities that I like to look for. So if you look at the blades here, as I hold this up to my camera, if you can see that, you'll see that there's some nice grain lines going down from the uh, wire down to the tip of the reed, because this is something that was growing at one time. So it's a lot like looking, in a way, at a piece of lumber at the um, lumber yard. You'll see lines like that with the wood grain. And this is very similar. You'll see some nice even lines. They're not too fine. It's not shiny looking. And they're not ragged looking either. Now if you find one that looks a little ragged where it's, they're a little uneven and some of them are a lot thicker, then that is probably not a good piece of cane and you should probably pass that reed up. You'll also notice in looking at the blades that they don't overlap or what they call side slip sometimes. That means if I'm looking at the side of the reed that you're seeing and I see part on the edge of the other blade showing through, I mean they're not quite lined up, they're slipped a little bit like that, that might be another one you want to skip. Now if you happen to have one like that, then it might play okay. It's not necessarily a deal breaker. The other thing you might want to look at, if you have a chance, is to look at the tip. If you notice, that tip is nice and what we call symmetrical, meaning the left side looks exactly like the right side, and the top blade looks like the bottom blade. It's nice and even. If the opening looks like it's a little to one side or the other, or you have one blade that is really, really arched like that, and the other one's kind of straight, so the reed is either smiling or frowning at you when you look at it like this, then the reed is not well balanced, and you probably want to avoid that too. If you have corners that either droop, turn up or turn down, the corners are not balanced and that might be another one to avoid. Now let's assume that you've got a reed that looks pretty good. One word about handling reeds that you've probably heard already is you never touch the tip. All right, You always handle it by the back end. Now what problems can you have if you don't have a good reed? I've got a few reeds here that I'd like to kind of show you, and I also want to take the uh, time to show you what you might be able to do about it to correct it. Now, I have a reed here that looks pretty good. Now, if I play on it, Okay, it's just a little hard to get sound out of, and it sounds maybe a little bit thin. If you were to put a tuner on it, it might be sharp. And you notice that when I got down to that low note, that low B flat, I had a hard time getting that out. It was work. Okay. What happens on that, if you have that problem, is you might look at the tip of the reed, and it might be just a little bit closed. All right? Might be very closed. So if you get a reed like that, you can take a pair of needle nose pliers like this. And what I'm going to do is, if you can see that there, the first wire, meaning the one that's closest to the tip of the reed, I'm going to squeeze very lightly from the sides. And I mean very lightly, just gradually. Look at the tip opening while you do it. Squeeze very, very gradually until that reed opens just a little bit more. 
And I say very gradually, being very careful, especially with that first wire, because if you're not careful with that first wire, you could possibly end up with a reed that looks like that. And that, of course, you don't want. Now that I've opened my reed a little bit, let's see if it changed anything. Bigger sound, okay? It's easier to produce a sound. And my B flat down there is easy. Okay? Much better responding read. So, that's one extreme. Now, what if I have the other extreme? Let me try another one here. because that reed tip is pretty wide open. See that? So what I'm going to do with that one is exactly the opposite of the reed I had before. And I'm going to squeeze that just a little bit closed. Again, being very careful not to squeeze too hard. And try it again. take that one. All right. Let me explain one other problem that can happen with reeds that may be solvable or it may disappear. Now I have a reed that I'm going to attempt to play certain notes. This is a brand new reed. And I'm going to play my E natural that's on the third space in the staff. Sounds okay. Now if I really accent it, really play it loud, tongue kind of hard, here how it goes down. And the D flat below that in the staff on the third line kind of does the same thing. That reed may be just a little bit thin at the tip. If it's a brand new reed, let it sit for a while. Maybe let it sit for a week. Maybe play it every other day or so and then try it every once in a while. And as the reed breaks in, the cane will harden up and that problem may go away. All right. If it's a reed that you've been playing on for a while and it starts doing that, the sound starts sounding a little bit buzzy and it drops those, it's time to get a new reed. One other advice about reeds I'd like to offer you is you never want to fall in love with just one reed and play it and play it and play it. You always want to have on hand several reeds that you rotate, maybe on a daily basis, just go through them one at a time and then go back through them. Because the problem with having a favorite read is, let's say it's concert day, you're playing for Paris, or you're playing a contest, and you're in the band hall, and for some reason you accidentally drop your read, and your stand partner comes along, walking along, and accidentally steps on your read, and it's ruined. Now you're in a panic. Now if you've rotated those reads, you've got several on hand that you not only have several reads, but several that you're confident in playing, that's no problem. You just take out one of those other reeds and you're set to go. Any other adjustments for reeds, if they're too heavy or anything else, where the tone quality just never quite settles out and everything, is, that probably at this point should be left to an experienced reed maker or bassoon player or perhaps your private teacher. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you've picked up a few things on how to pick and how to adjust reeds. And I hope you have fun doing it. Thank you for watching.